Hello my dear friends welcome back to my channel today i am going to discuss part 3 of selection of teeth in this lecture we will discuss the selection of posterior teeth in detail the selection of mold of the posterior teeth that will be used for the dentures is the responsibility of the dentist almost all denture tooth manufacturers have a guide to recommend the posterior teeth based on the size of anterior teeth so coming to various posterior tooth forms the historical development of the posterior tooth forms can be categorized according to their morphology this is true bite teeth okay this is an anatomic teeth and here 33 degree anatomic posterior teeth to be developed okay these are the first 33 degree anatomic posterior teeth and they are made of porcelain and resemble natural teeth with transverse ridges intended for tight incho digitation cross bite situations were difficult to treat with these teeth this is the picture showing gaisi cross bite teeth in 1927 this is also designed by gaisi here the maxillary bucket cusp is eliminated and the parietal cusp occluded with the anatomic lobe of posterior occlusal surface of all the posterior teeth were reduced and these were used for cross bite cases and this one is the channel tooth and this was designed by sears in 1927 Here the maxillary occlusal surfaces had a deep channel running mesiodistally along all four, four posterior teeth. Lower posteriors were like a single ridge, half the buccolingual width of the normal anatomic teeth, which articulated with the upper channel, and they permitted unlimited protrusive glide. This is the Pilkington Turner teeth. This is designed by Pilkington and Turner. Here they resembled natural occlusal forms but had an angle of 30 degree. Provided a small degree of freedom in protrusive movements but were interlocked in the lateral excursions. Okay. and these are the modified posteriors it is designed by french upper posterior teeth were similar to the channel teeth but with very shallow buccolingual inclines and lower teeth had a sloping buccal surface that was placed below the occlusion only lingual cusp contacted the groove in the upper this was claimed to direct the forces lingually stabilizing the lower edge this is the picture showing a metal insert in resin this is designed by john vincent here the circles of gold solder wire or stainless steel wire were inserted into the maxillary posterior resin occlusal surface and these are cross blades designed by sosin Here the occlusal surfaces of the upper second premolar and first and second molars were covered with vitalium. During trying, lower posteriors were removed and the denture processed. Coming to the non-anatomic teeth, this is the inverted cusp teeth. and this was one of the first non anatomic design and the occlusal surface of the teeth was flat with sharp concentric ridges around cup like depressions that is known as inverted cusp and efficient mastication was claimed with this type but actually the depressions became clogged with food and lost their efficiency These are the Myerson's true cusp teeth and this was designed by Myerson. This is also a cuspless posterior that had a series of 
buccal lingual ridge with sluice veins between them. This is the Nelson's chopping block teeth designed by Nelson. Here flat occlusal surfaces with ridges. Mandibular ridges were placed transversely while maxillary ridges were mesiodistic. And the perpendicular contact made by the ridges was claimed to have an efficient shredding and cutting mechanism. And these are the Svensson's non-lock teeth designed by Svensson. Flat occlusal surfaces with sluice base for shredding and allowing foot to escape from the occlusal table. And they also provided some balancing contact as mild buccal and lingual incline was provided. Coming to Hardy's vitalium occlusal that is VO that is Hardy's posteriors. Here these are the non-anatomic teeth which contain metal inserts in the occlusal surface. And these are coi masticators. These are the teeth designed by Cook. Here the mandibular second premolar and first molar were flat stainless steel castings with diagonal holes on the occlusal surface that sloped buccally. So the selection of posterior teeth based on size of the teeth and form of the teeth. And the factors which are considered while selecting the size of the teeth are buccolingual width, mesiodistal length and occlusogingival height. This is the picture showing the buccolingual width which should be in harmony with the cheeks, tongue and musculature. So buccolingual width should be sufficient to act as a table to hold food during trituration to support cheeks and tongue and function in harmony with the musculature during swallowing, speaking and mastication. Here the buccolingual width of the artificial posterior teeth should be less than width of the natural teeth being replaced. This is the natural teeth and this is the denture with the tooth. And it uh, here the buccolingual width should not be too large to encroach on tongue and cheek. Here this is large buccolingual width. Here this is the correct buccolingual width. This is the tongue and this is cheek. So it should not be reduced such that the support for the cheeks is lost. And it should also not be so large that it encroaches the, on the tongue space and buccal corridor. This is the correct selection of posterior teeth size. Uh, it allows development of the properly contoured polished surface of the denture. Okay. Here, NJ buccolingual width of the residual ridge is utilized for placement of artificial tooth when the ridge is well formed. And next one is the mesiodistal length. This is the mesiodistal length of the edangelous ridge from distal of mandibular canine till the ascending ramus. It determines the mesiodistal space available for the posterior teeth. This is the picture showing the various effects of uh, setting teeth over the steep slope leading from the residual ridge to the retromolar pad. This X which indicates the beginning of the slope from the residual ridge leading to the retromolar pad. Here this arrow mark which indicating the potential movement of the mandibular denture during function if a second molar were placed on the slope leading to the retromolar Okay. And coming to the occlusal gingival height or vertical height and this is determined by the available inter ridge space, occlusal plane and height of the anterior teeth. Long teeth are preferred when the interocclusal space is adequate. 
shorter teeth are preferred when the intraoclusal space is deficient. And form of the teeth, the factors are cusp teeth that is anatomic, semi-anatomic, then cuspless teeth and special forms. And these are the teeth with 33, 20 degree and 0 degree tooth morphology. So what is 33 degree? It is anatomic, 20 degree semi-anatomic and 0 degree is non-anatomic. And these are the teeth with 33 degree anatomic, 20 degree semi-anatomic and 0 degree tooth morphologies as viewed from the mixing. Okay. And these are the two different monoplane occlusions. Here the opposing non-anatomic teeth. Here the anatomic opposing non-anatomic. Okay. So here this is the anatomic and opposing non-anatomic. This is opposing non-anatomic teeth. Here the opposing semi-anatomic that is 20 degree denture teeth arranged for a traditional balance occlusion. Here this is the right side. This is bilateral or cross sash contacts. This is left side. Unilateral cross tooth contact. Patient in left working movement. And this is the example of a lingualized occlusion here. This is the balanced lingualized occlusion and here it is non-balanced lingualized occlusion. Here the teeth are arranged to illustrate the relative position of the tooth inclines when the teeth are arranged for centric occlusion. Horizontal overlap has been eliminated for better understanding. So this is the centric occlusion relationship. So here it is the functional inclines of the protrusive movement. This is mesial and this is distal. Here the mandible it has assumed the protruded position and the protrusive functional inclines of the opposing teeth are illustrated. And here the cusp angle of the tooth is an angulation of functional incline as measured from the long axis of the tooth and the cusp angulation is the 30 degree. So here this is the denture tooth with 30 degree cusp angle. This is the plane of occlusion. So this is the effective cusp angle. This is the angle of functional incline as measured from a line parallel to the bench top. So here as the tooth angled H degree effective cusp angle and hence functional incline change in like a manner like this manner okay. And effective cusp angle can also be altered by grinding the functional incline. And finally coming to the summary of our lecture. Artificial teeth are selected for aesthetics and function. Size, form and color play an important role in this selection. While aesthetics dictate the selection of anterior teeth, type of occlusion plant dictates the posterior tooth selection. Anatomic teeth are usually used especially when the balanced occlusion in eccentric relations is planned. Non-anatomic teeth may be used in specific conditions. That's all for today's lecture. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you.